Greetings, YouTube. Dark Table is filled with so many rich and powerful features which give one so much creative control and being able to design your own look for your photographs, which in my opinion, vastly outpaces other paid software. But one of the most common complaints I keep hearing is, is you spend all this time designing and developing your own workflow, but then you have to repeat it over and over again for each and every photo. In this video, I'm going to show you how to rasterize a powerful workflow into one click and allow you to save significant time in editing. So stick around, grab some coffee, and let's detonate our Lightroom subscriptions in one click. So like any other software, Darktable has its own internal ability to create presets. And in Darktable, they're called styles. So what styles allow you to do with great flexibility is rasterize any combination of adjustments into a preset and apply them all at once to a single photo or in batch. So say maybe you have 400 photos from a wedding, or maybe you want to make a style for a particular lens or camera. You can edit those photos in batch and save a significant amount of time in editing. And then all you have to do is make any final optimizations to each individual photo to taste. All right, so let's go jump in to Darktable. All right, so we're in Darktable now. What I'm gonna do is show you how I rasterize my primary workflow into a Darktable style, which I can use as a starting point to edit all my photographs, saving a lot of time. And then I'm gonna make some final finishing touches to these photographs as well. All right, so when we make a style in Darktable, we want to think carefully about the things that we actually want to incorporate into the style and things that we actually want to exclude, things we might optimize after we apply the style because it may be different from photograph to photograph. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and make the adjustments I would apply as a standard base to all my photographs and then make some final optimizations after that. And for the sake of time, I'm going to go through my workflow rather quickly when I'm developing this style. But if you'd like to see more information about how I edit my photographs in more detail, see the video card above and see the additional resources down below. All right, so as a starting base for all my photographs, I like to add a white border around my photo, which helps with editing and it looks really nice as well. So we can do that by using the uh, framing module. So I'm gonna go inside the framing module and I wanna use a color of white and then I'm gonna use a border size of 5%, 5%. There we go. All right, so the next step is lens correction and denoising. Now, I personally prefer to leave the lens correction module off by default and only apply it when I want it as necessary, but I know many people would feel differently about that and just add whatever you'd like to your personal preference. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the uh, denoising module at default settings. And by default, it's going to pick up the ISO of the camera for the specific sensor and apply a curve for the noise. And I'm gonna leave it at default. All right, so to add the denoising, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the denoise module on at default settings. And by default, Darktable automatically detected the ISO from a camera as well as the sensor itself. And it applies a profile based on an ISO and sensor. And I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this at default settings. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is bring out the colorfulness in this photograph. And I'm gonna do that with the color balance RGB module. So I'm gonna go inside the color balance RGB module and I'm gonna start adding some saturation to the perceptual saturation grading. And specifically, I'm gonna add more to the shadows, some to the midtones, and just a little bit to the highlights because you don't wanna go overboard on the highlights because we tend to perceive more saturation in the shadows and in the highlights, and this will produce a more natural color response. Add some chroma as well, and just a little bit of vibrance too. There we go. All right, so the next thing is, is I'm gonna add some sharpening and some local contrast. So for a base level of sharpening, I'm gonna go ahead and use the diffuse or sharpen module. And I'm gonna do that with the Lens de Blur Medium Preset, which I think works as a fantastic starting point for most photographs. It works really well on almost everything. 
And if you want to change the strength of the sharpening, we just simply can adjust the iterations here. Some photographs might need a little bit more, maybe more towards 20 or 24, but I tend to think it doesn't need any less. So I'm going to go ahead by default and leave it at 16. All right, so the next thing is, is adding local contrast. And we can do that with the diffuse or sharpen module as well. And I'm going to do that by making a new instance off the current instance of diffuse or sharpen. So I'm going to click new instance. And I'm going to go ahead and use the local contrast preset at default settings. I tend to think that by default, the local contrast preset works, works wonderfully for most photographs, but some photographs I actually think could benefit from a little less. In that case, I might pull it back to like six or seven iterations to reduce the strength. But by default here, I'm going to leave it at 10. And one more thing, if we use the standard local contrast module, it would actually go after the tone mapping module, in this case, sigmoid. Now I want to do that with this local contrast diffuser sharpen as well. So I'm going to go ahead and hit control shift and drag it after sigmoid. So it's in the same part of the process chain. All right, so the last thing is, is color calibration and white balance. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the color calibration module. And what I wanted to do is apply a cat that correlates to the white balance as was shot by my camera and use that as a starting point for all my photographs. So what I'm going to do is click this down arrow for this illuminate and I'm going to select as shot by camera and make sure that it codes this into the style. All right, so one more thing here before we go ahead and make the style. I noticed in the background of the video making process, I accidentally added some additional contrast here. So I'm going to go ahead and reset this because I want that to be a final optimization I make later and I do not want that to be incorporated into the style. All right, let's go ahead and make the style now. So the very first thing you want to do to make the style is you actually want to go ahead and compress the history stack. And what this does is reduce the amount of operations we have into the minimal amount as possible before we go ahead and actually make the style. So I'm going to go ahead and compress the history stack. All right, so to make the style, what we want to do is click this three circle icon right here, which pulls up a menu for creating the style. So the very first thing we want to do is select which modules we want to incorporate into the style. In my case, I want to go from the framing all the way up to the top. And this one on the top is very important, this module order custom. In my case, I changed the order of the modules, in particular, this diffuser sharpen local contrast. And I want that to be incorporated into the style. So I want to make sure I click that on. So I'm going to go ahead and call the style boop the like button. Because if you boop the like button, that really helps up my video reach out to a wider audience. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and save the style. All right, so now that we've made the style, I'm going to go ahead and reset the history for this photograph. And we can apply the style we just made down here with this three circle icon. Now I'm going to go ahead and select boop the like button, applying the procedure all in one click, saving a lot of time. Isn't that cool? All right, so now all we have left to do is make some final optimizations to the photo. And for this photo, I think you could use a little bit of extra brilliance to the highlights to brighten the snow. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the highlight slider here in the color balance RGB tab to around 15% or so. Perfect. Now looks good. So here's the before and after. All right, so let's apply the style to some more photographs. All right, so applying the style. Pop, there we go. So now I'm going to go ahead and use the retouch tool to clean this up a little bit. I have a dirty sensor. I'm going to speed this up for the sake of the video. All right, so let's bring out some more colorfulness and some brilliance to the highlights as well. So I'm going to go back into the color balance RGB module. I'm going to start by increasing the highlights, the highlight brilliance. What about, yeah, here's good. Now I'm going to pull up the saturation a bit more as well. Bring in some extra vibrance and chroma. There we go. 
I think that the uh, contrast and color that comes out of this vintage Nikon 80 to 200 millimeter f4.5 lens is absolutely killer. Here's the before, and here's after. All right, so I took this photograph recently with my new vintage Nikon 300 millimeter f4.5 EDIF lens, and let's give the style a try on this photograph. Applying the style. All right, good starting point. All right, so since this photo is a bit too blue, I'm gonna go into the color calibration module and I'm gonna adjust the settings and add in some warmth. So I'm gonna switch from ass shot and camera to custom. And I'm gonna pull the chroma slider to the left. Adding in a bit more warmth. There we go, I think that's a bit better, better spot. All right, so next thing is, is let's go ahead and color grade this photo. So what I'm gonna do is add another instance of color balance RGB. I'm gonna go into the four ways tab and what I wanna do is add some extra warmth to the highlights and maybe cool the shadows just a little bit to add some nice color contrast to the photograph. So I'm gonna go into the highlights gain and I'm gonna add a nice warm color here, somewhere between yellow and red, somewhere about here. And now I'm gonna add some warmth to the highlights. There we go. Now I'm gonna go onto the shadow side here and add a nice cool color and add just a little bit of chroma in the shadows. There we go. All right, so let's go bring a little bit more brilliance to this photograph and I think it'll be done. So I'm gonna go into the original color balance RGB. I'm gonna add some highlights again. Don't wanna do it too much. I can watch the waveform at the top. There we go, perfect. Now I'm just gonna add just a little bit more color because I added some highlight brilliance. There we go. All right, so for the icing on the cake, I'm gonna make one more final adjustment. And since I'm using the nightly build of Darktable, I'm gonna go ahead and find the uh, color equalizer, which is not yet in the main version of Darktable, but the color equalizer is a scene referred version of the old color zones module. So if, if you wanna do something with the regular version of Darktable, color zones will work wonderfully as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the saturation of the, the orange, yellow, and red colors just a little bit. And do the same thing of brightness as well. Turn it off and on for comparison. Yeah, it really makes that fence pop in the background and it brings some more definition in the color of the deer's hair. I like that. There we go. All right, so here's the before and after. All right, so as you can see, we can use styles and dark table and rasterize any combination of adjustments into a one-click workflow and save a significant amount of time in editing our photos and maintain the best parts of dark table as well. Hey, let me know in the comment section below. Ah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. So hey, let me know in the comment section below what you find valuable and intriguing in this video. And also, if anything else in Darktable has saved you a significant amount of time in editing your photos, let me know as well. Also, if you like one of your photos edited in a future video, let me know as well. Hey, so I hope you found this video valuable and intriguing. If you did, leave a like. It really helps out my channel and helps it reach out to a wider audience as well. Also, if you'd like to check out more content like this, subscribe to my channel. And also, if you'd like to check out some of my photographic work, see the link in the description below. Hope to see you in another video.